Welcome to Compliance Mitigation. My name is Michael Santos, and today we're going to talk about one of the most, oh, I would say fastest growing industries in America, and that, of course, is legal marijuana, cannabis. We're, but unfortunately, we're going to be hearing about somebody who got into a little bit of trouble, including the CEO of a hundred million, a CEO of a cannabis company that got wrapped up into a hundred million dollar bank fraud scheme. So you can profile through this just by going through the course. If you want to get the certificate, of course, you'll have to be a member of our premium class, but we do encourage you to sign up for our free trial. Uh, in today's uh, po uh, episode, we're going to be talking about the former chief, chief executive officer of the California cannabis delivery company, Ease Technology. They, he was charged with and pled guilty to conspiracy to commit bank fraud in connection with credit card processing for cannabis products on the Ease website. We're going to learn about why that takes place and what he did in response to that government investigation. And our hopes is that as a participant, by the end of this lesson, you're going to understand why the federal government can prosecute individuals in the cannabis industry, even if it's not related to a drug offense. You'll be able to describe conspiracy to commit bank fraud. You'll be able to identify when authorities consider electronic payments for consumer goods as fraudulent transactions. And you'll be able to explain how a written compliance program and employee training can protect your business. The intended audience, of course, are business owners, business leaders, and white-collar professionals. The key terms, cannabis, white-collar crime, conspiracy to commit bank fraud, criminal indictment, compliance plan, and compliance training. Here's the state of the industry. When voters or legislators decriminalize cannabis sales, Cannabis retailers have to strive to stabilize several critical areas within the business, including their supply chain, uh, how they're going to process payments and transactions, and also they have to be abreast of the laws that regulate the industry, state law versus federal law. A lot of people don't understand that we have 53 different criminal justice systems in our country, and just because one criminal justice system uh, declares something legal, it doesn't mean it's legal everywhere, and that's certainly the case with cannabis. Despite media reports indicating there will be a run on new medical marijuana retailers, cannabis retailers have seen market share stagnate due to consumers shifting to other natural products like CBD oils. In order to compete and stay compliant, cannabis retailers must stay vigilant over their internal compliance measures, including how consumers pay for their cannabis. Now, here's the background and the analysis. This case study profiles California cannabis delivery company Ease Technologies and its former CEO, James Patterson, along with two foreigners, Hamid Akvan and Ruben Weigand. Forgive me if I didn't get those uh, pronunciations correct. They've all been accused of conspiracy to commit bank fraud. The charges against these defendants all result from online consumer transactions for their purchase of cannabis. All the information in this case study comes from three sources. One memorandum order issued from the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York and a criminal indictment along with a newspaper article. Now, in this case, Patterson, Akavan, and Wygon have been charged separately via charging document filed by federal prosecutors called a criminal indictment. If you don't know what an indictment is, <clears throat> we encourage you to check out our course, Compliance 101, where we talk all about white-collar crime and the way that government investigations begin. But typically, after federal authorities learn of criminal activity, the investigators turn the results of the investigation over to federal prosecutors. Prosecutors then will review the information. If they believe a person committed a crime, the prosecutors seek a criminal indictment against the defendant. A criminal indictment requires the impaneling of a grand jury. Prosecutors introduce evidence to the grand jury outlining the case against the named defendant. The grand jury puts the case to a formal vote for or against indictment as to whether or not probable cause exists that a crime occurred. Here, the federal grand jury indicted people for white-collar crimes. In this case, Ease has not been charged as a defendant related to these criminal charges, but it very easily could have been. It's all the more reason to be implementing compliance programs to protect a company because if one person does the wrong thing, the entire company can come down. Now, as a brief background, we can describe Ease as a marijuana delivery service. Customers order their cannabis online, they pay for the products online, and Ease delivers it to the consumer. Despite initial impressions that they may be a, there may be, <clears throat> this may be a case involving allegations of illegal drug trafficking, since marijuana has been listed as a Schedule I controlled substance by the DEA, this case involves a white-collar crime called bank fraud. Federal prosecutors defined bank fraud as... 
whoever knowingly executes or attempts to execute a scheme or artifice. One, to defraud a, finan to defraud a financial institution, or two, to obtain any of the money, funds, credits, assets, security, or other property owned by or under the custody or control of a financial institution by means of false or fraudulent pretenses, representations, or promises, and shall be fined not more than a million dollars or imprisoned not more than, get this, 30 years. <clears throat> now, in this case, the grand jury charged defendants with conspiracy to commit bank fraud stemming from an alleged scheme to deceive banks into processing more than $100 million in marijuana sales. These marijuana sales had been intentionally misidentified in banking systems to avoid detection by the banks. In layman's terms, Patterson, Akavan, and Wygon have been charged with lying to the banks about the types of transactions on the E's website in order to trick the banks into accepting and processing the transactions. Large financial institutions in the United States have been reluctant and intentionally slow to process credit and debit card transactions involving cannabis. Since the federal government continues to allow cannabis sales, banks will not process transactions with businesses that engage in cannabis. In order to trick banks and credit card companies into processing and clearing cannabis payments, schemers intentionally mislabel the cannabis payments as some other legal category. But when a company mislabels payments for cannabis, investigators and prosecutors will characterize the deception as the white-collar crime of bank fraud. Patterson pled guilty to one count of conspiracy to commit bank fraud. He also agreed to cooperate against Akaban and Wygon in their criminal trials. Patterson's agreement to plead guilty may result in a lighter prison sentence. The criminal trials for Akaban and Wygon are going to take place sometime in 2021, or at least that's the current schedule. So here's our recommendation. With the infancy of the legal cannabis industry, we can expect charges for bank fraud to really proliferate. The United States economy relies on law enforcement taking a stand against fraudulent behavior in order to stabilize the economy and our banking system. Fraud creates victims where none previously existed. According to prosecutors, Patterson, Akavan, and Wygon victimized the banks and the credit card companies. When the defendants deceived the financial institutions into processing payments for cannabis, they put those financial institutions at risk for federal prosecution. Cannabis retailers must understand that the major credit card companies will not accept bank transactions for marijuana purchases since it remains illegal to do so under the federal law. The only way these electronic payments could be approved would be if the cannabis retailers demonstrate the payments are properly labeled in the financial transaction and do not violate the Bank Secrecy Act. The Bank Secrecy Act, engaged by a rule of the Federal Treasure Treasury Department, basically provides that banks are required to assist the U.S. government in detecting and preventing money laundering by filing reports of cash transactions exceeding 10000 per day and to report suspicious activity that might signal criminal activity. At Compliance Mitigation, we recommend that, they, that, that, comp, that entrepreneurs bring forth strong written internal compliance plans for all types of businesses. Our employee training programs must assist businesses employees in, in understanding the ramifications for failing to recognize fraudulent transactions. Each of the professionals on our team has gone through some type of an investigation and we can really help people understand, hey, you've got to uh, recognize that there are significant risks to operating a business outside of rules and regulations. And obviously the CEO is finding this out the hard way because he's been charged with a federal crime and he is uh, going to face a sentencing hearing. And he also has to cooperate against two people that were probably at one time close to him. So really, make sure that you understand the regulations and the laws. Bank fraud is an important uh, white-collar crime to understand, not only in this case, but just in everyday life. I uh, really encourage you to visit our free uh, trial program. If you haven't done so already, you'll see how you can get certificates. All of this training can help to uh, apprise uh, everybody on your team how easily their decisions on the job can potentially lead to gov very costly government investigations and sadly for many can lead to the loss of liberty. My name is Michael Santos. Visit us at ComplianceMitigation.com for more information on how to avoid government investigations 
and if you're in one, how to prepare for mitigation strategies before a white collar uh, charge derails your life. Thank you.